Hello everyone, in this video we are going to learn how to deploy our first Dapper application to Azure Container Apps. In our first video we learned what container apps are. In our second video we saw how two containers can communicate in Azure Container Apps. In our last video we saw how you can scale out containers based on the HTTP traffic that the container receives. And in this video, it's kind of an interesting video, we are building our first Dapper application. Now, what is Dapper? It is a set of building blocks and APIs for building microservices. Dapper is a portable event-driven runtime that makes it easy for developers to build resilient, stateless and stateful microservice-based applications. The word building block, it's important because when you build these modern microservices, you need to have a lot of helping features. For example, you need to have a service-to-service -service invocation mechanism, you need to store your state, and you need to do publish and subscribe for asynchronous communication between these microservices. Now, these three features, they cover most of our internal communication problems. In addition to these three, we can have input and output bindings. So basically, you can invoke other services easily and you can get the events or the outputs of other services easily into our microservices application using resource binding, building blocks. If you have areas in your application that can benefit from having actor pattern implemented, we have features and microservices should be observable. Dapper provides building blocks for that as well. And we have secrets for storing your confidential information like connection strings. Now this image here and this image covers the high level idea of Dapper really well. Now if you look at this image here, we have the microservices, we have like four microservices here. And as you can see here, we have Dapper attached to each microservice. So what is happening here is that Dapper implements sidecar design pattern. Each microservice that we build has a sidecar attached to it. If you want this microservice to communicate with this microservice, you invoke the APIs of this microservice and these sidecars, they handle communication. The sidecar will invoke this microservice and get you the result so that you can focus on building the logic of those microservices without worrying about the underlying communication problems. All right, now that I have given a basic introduction to what Dapper is, let's go back into Azure portal and continue to build our app. Now, if you look here, we have a container apps environment and two container apps that we have deployed in our last video. And we have a simple ASP.NET MVC app deployed here. Now, if we go into Visual Studio, we have two containers running. We have this ASP.NET MVC app and we have the backend. This is a really, really simple setup. As you can see, we have hard-coded two items in our backend and we are retrieving the to-dos of the backend from the front end through this HTTP call. This is an internal HTTP call to that container. Now in this video, I want to turn this simple ASP.NET application into a Dapper application. For that, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add this new get package dapper.asp.net core into my to-do app front-end project. All right. To convert this application into a Dapper application, we need to add few configurations and we'll have to run a few command line scripts as well. Using VS Code is easier for those tasks. Now let me go into solution and copy the solution path and open this up in VS Code. All right. Now I have opened my project in VS Code. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to work with two features of Dapper. I'm going to show you how to work with state stores and how you can do service to service invocations. First, let me add a folder here. I'm going to call it components and this will contains all the configuration files that we need when working with Dapper. All right, I have added this YML file. Now I'm going to add this YML here and this will represent the state store and the state store is Azure Blob Storage. There are many state stores. You can learn about them if you go into the Dapper documentation site. Now let me add a PowerShell script and that will contain all the scripts that we need to execute to deploy this application into an Azure container app. Let me call this one deploy.ps1. All right. 
Now I have added this script. I have created this script to create all our resources and to deploy our app into an Azure Container Apps environment because this saves our time. We have done the resource creation using the Azure portal in our last few videos. So we don't want to repeat that in this video as well. I'm going to attach this script to the description down below if you want to follow along, if you want to experiment this by yourself. First, we are defining few variables here. As you can see, I'm calling my resource group Dapper Container App. Let me add maybe demo here as well. All right. Now we are creating a resource group and a storage account. Now, why are we creating this storage account here? We're using this Azure Blob Storage State Store Building Block. And this requires a storage account, an Azure storage account to store its data. After doing that, I'm going to get the storage key of that storage account. And then I'm going to update the state store file. Now, if you look here, we have storage name and storage account key. I'm going to replace those two with actual storage key and storage account name that we're going to use. And after that, I'm going to create an Azure Container Apps environment in East US region. And after that, I'm going to set this Dapper state store. For that, I'm going to use this command here, Dapper component, set the name of the environment and the resource group and Dapper component name. It's a state store and this is the YAML file. And then you can list the Dapper components using this command here. And after setting up the environment creation and Dapper state store, we're going to build our images again. For that, we're going to use these familiar Docker tools. And after that, I'm going to push it to my public Docker Hub repository. And finally, I'm creating the two applications in this container apps environment. First, I'm going to create the backend and then I'm going to create the front end. Now, if you look here, we have a few differences in these two resources. This one is an internal resource. As you can see, this one is an external resource. Now, before running this script here, we need to do a small change in our code. Now I'm going back into Visual Studio and I'm going into front end and home controller. Now, if you look here in our last videos, we have used an HTTP client. We have used this URL. This is the URL provided by Azure Container Apps internal ingress. Now we need to change this to use Dapper Sidecar. Now first, let me get rid of this code that we already have. And then I'm going to add Dapper client using. We have already installed Dapper.ASP.NET Core package. In this video, as I said, I'm going to show you how you can work with service to service invocation and state stores. The first thing that I'm going to show you is how to work with state stores. For that, we have to create this Dapper client builder. For that, we have to create an object of this Dapper client. And then I'm going to get the state of this store and this key. I'm going to call it counter and I'm going to increment that counter by one. After that, I'm going to save the counter again. So basically, I'm going to implement a page view counter for our to do application to show you how you can use this Dapper state store building block. Now, as you can see, these two variables are missing. Let me introduce those two as well. I'm going to call my store name state store, the key counter. And then I'm going to assign this counter to the view back so that I can display this in our page. And now that we saw how you can interact with Dapper state stores, the next thing that I'm going to show you, as I said, is how service to service interaction works. If you go into the documentation, this is how we can interact with other services. You don't specify the actual URL of the destination client. You're using this client SDK to invoke the HTTP endpoints. In the back end, what is happening here is that it invokes the Dapper sidecar and that will do the invocation. And this is the name of the service and this is the name of the method and the parameters that you have in the path. Now I'm going back to Visual Studio. When you deploy this application, you can read the port of the Dapper sidecar using Dapper HTTP port environment variable like this. We can use the Dapper client to invoke the actual backend of this frontend application, or we can use HTTP to invoke the Dapper sidecar. Now for this, I have used the Dapper client for our service to service invocation. I'm going to go with the HTTP invocation. 
For that, I'm going to create an HTTP client here and then I'm going to invoke the localhost port that I'm reading from this environment variable here. And then I'm going to invoke to do back. This is the name that I'm going to use for our container app, the backend container app, and the name of the method is todos. Now, if we go into backend application, as you can see, it is todos. And then I'm going to read the content. Then I'm going to assign the list of JSON past todos into this todos dynamic variable of my view back. Now, let me save this. Now, if we go into the index CSHTML here, as you can see, I'm displaying the todos that I return from this action method. Now here, in addition to this, I'm gonna introduce something like this so that we can see how the state store works as well. All right, now that we have done all the code changes that we need for this demo, let me go back into the script that we have created to create all the Azure resources and the deployment as well. Now let me run these scripts one by one. First, I'm going to define these variables here and then I'm going to create this storage account. Let me run this now. As you can see, the storage account is getting created. That's done. Let's store the storage key in our state store file. For that, I'm going to run this script here. All right. Now, if we go into the state store, as you can see, we have updated the name of the storage account and the key as well. The next thing that I'm going to do is creating the container apps environment. That's also done. Now let me create the Dapper state store in this container apps environment. All right. Now if I try to list this, as you can see, this is the state store of this container app. Let's build these two Docker images and push them to my Docker Hub repository. All right. Now I have built and pushed the two containers to Docker Hub. Now it is time for us to create the backend and the frontend container apps. I'm going to first create the backend application and then I'm going to create the frontend application. Now we have successfully executed the whole script. We have the backend and the frontend. As you can see, we have the URL here. Now if I go into Azure portal and the resource group, we have the container apps environment and a storage account for keeping our state and the back end also the front end as well. Now let me go into the front end. In the front end, we have the application URL. Let me click on it now. As you can see, our app works. And if I keep refreshing it, as you can see here, this number increases and that is because we are storing the application data in the state store and for this application that is Azure Blob Storage. Now if I go into the Blob Storage containers, storage account containers and here we have the container that contains the counter state. In this video, we have turned this simple ASP.NET application into a Dapper application, a simple one. We have learned how to work with Dapper state stores and we saw how to invoke service to service invocations directly using the APIs. And in addition to that, we learn how to create these Azure resources using Azure CLI. And this is the end of this video. If you have further questions or comments, please let me know down below. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you learned something new today. I will see you with another video like this soon and thanks for watching.